Hey everyone, no I haven't done a vlog in a while, and uh, that's because I got off schedule and uh, but I don't have time for that. I just came back from seeing Frank and Weenie. I meant to see it, uh, meant to, yeah, I meant to see it like a while back, but uh, it took me about a week, but I finally saw it, and I decided to do a fresh video right after seeing it, so all my excitement and just the high of seeing it is still here. Uh, first of all, I had been waiting for this film for several years. I think maybe five, five years, maybe. Um, I am a huge fan of the original Rank and Weenie short that Disney did not release until the 80s, and I am glad to see that he stayed very true to his his original source material. And I am happy with the changes he made. I admit. I did find the whole science project, other kids thing, getting involved a little grating, but I don't know if that's because of having seen the original or not. But I did love the homage to classic horror films, classic thrillers, classic Burton, and classic stop motion. Now, I'm going to consider this both classic stop motion and classic Burton because it is apparent in Corpse Bride as well, and if he does another stop motion, which hopefully he will, uh, I think it would be in there as well. Um, in Corpse Bride, he has always has at least one character. <coughs> excuse me. In well, at least in his now stop motions, um, since Corpse Bride, he has at least one character that has the old style of stop motion. By that, I mean that um, McKinnison and Sanders, which are the people who make the puppets for um, Frank and Weenie and Corpse Bride. And um, they have very, very, very advanced stop motion puppets where the mouth movement is activated by... <coughs> my phone rang. ...is activated by little screws in the side of the puppet's head. And that will do the motions. Before that, you had to either replace the whole puppet's head to move the mouth and facial features, or you had to move parts like the mouth or the eyes or the, you know, et cetera. And in this one, it was the character who paid homage to Vincent Price, which was the teacher. And his, he has a very long face. Instead of having a device to move that face, it has a, um, he has a removable mouthpiece which would be an homage to classic stop motion, which I appreciated. I appreciated all the um, hints towards classic horror and obviously Frankenstein, which is what the whole movie is based off of. There is even a kid with a pet turtle named Shelley, as in Mary Shelley. At least I assume that's <laughs> what it was referencing. Uh, there's everything there from, you know, the whole black and white thing, which the original wasn't black and white. But... Um, it, it was it was very good. I, I, I went in knowing I was going to be sad because um, I have a dog of my own. And even though I knew what was going to happen, I, I still cried and still felt like there's twists and turns. Because even if we saw the original, there's still, you know, there's still some guessing as to what's going to happen. And I liked how we had a little bit more insight with Victor, the main character, than in the original short. The original short, it's very brief. It's very crisp. The, the way the plot moves. In this one, we get a little bit more insight into who Victor is, and it's the typical Tim Burton child character, much like, um, much like Vincent from his shorts. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of, you know, Burton when he was younger, pretty much. And um, we get a little insight, um, a little, you know, a little bit more backstory into how um, Vince, um, Victor and his dog interacted, and I liked, I loved watching the movements of Sparky, the dog, because they tried very, very hard to get the movements for um, Sparky to be very close to how a dog behaves, um, the whining, the sitting, the scratching, the, the jumping, the paw movements. It, it took just a lot of work and research just to get the dog movements. Overall, I, I have very little complaints. Um, I wasn't too fond of how they handled the uh, Asian kid in the class. There were certain things about him that seemed a little 
stereotypically inappropriate. I didn't like the inconsistency with the timeline. The film obviously was designed based off the original, which was designed to feature more of a 1950s, 1960s sub suburban home. And with that said, why did they have two televisions in their house? There's one TV this parents were using to watch a movie. There's a TV upstairs he was using for his experiment. And household like that wouldn't have had um, two televisions um, normally, especially one that the kid would have been allowed to experiment on. And um, they even reference the fact that Pluto isn't a planet anymore. Uh, that's something that really didn't get picked up on um, until, you know, like the 90s. Um, or early 2000s. It was not being picked up on, you know, 50s, 60s, or 70s, if we're even going to go um, that recent. Um, unless he was trying to go for a in-between, not quite a certain, um, you know, time within a time. But I really don't think he did enough to get us to really believe that. Um, I liked the use of Winona Reiner and um, Catherine O'Hara. He hasn't used them in a while. Tim Burton has certain actors and actresses he likes to use consistently. And in the 80s, um, Catherine, um, Catherine O'Hara was one of those actresses. And later on, it, it, it is oh, obvious it's um, Helena Bonham Carter and Johnny Depp. But I liked the fact that he used um, some of his old, like favorite act actors and actresses that he hasn't used in a long time. Um, did this movie meet my expectations? Yes. And especially since since I from the time I originally heard about Frank and Winnie, which was years ago, um, he's made lots of works in between there. He's made Alice in Wonderland. He's made Sonny Todd. He's made you know he's made Dark Shadows. There was a lot of disappointment in between the time I originally heard about him remaking Frank and Weenie and actually seeing it. So it made me even more excited to see it because there had been so much disappointment. I had lowered my standards so much with Tim Burton. And this movie, uh, summarized in one sentence, would be, this movie made me excited to be a Tim Burton fan again. And that's what I took away from it. Sorry that you had to wait to hear my thoughts and opinions on this so late. Sorry I haven't made a vlog in a while. And sorry for the bad quality. I'm doing this on my phone. Uh, but let me know what you think of Frank and Winnie down in the comments and on my site or on underneath the video. And I will see you soon.